Hi, everyone. When we use formulas dependent on a specific cell, the thing we worry about most is that users are not aware that a cell is the precedent of another cell, and they cut or delete it, resulting in the formulas returning a wrong value or an error. The common method we use to prevent this from happening is to protect the sheet in the review tab. However, if we do not want to protect the sheet, we may consider writing a simple macro. Let me show you how. First, press alternate F11. Navigate to the sheet where we want to apply the macro. From the list of objects, select worksheet. If we want to disable the right-click command, which includes the delete option, then select the before right-click event. To disable this command only for a specific range, we can use the if statement with the variable target. We need the address property. Set it to the cell address. For example, b5, typed as a string, that is, within a set of quotation marks. Take note that the address property uses absolute cell referencing, thus we must include the dollar signs in this cell address. When Excel detects the selected cell, then we can instruct it to cancel the right-click command. We can also leave a message if necessary. End this if statement with and if. On the other hand, users may use a shortcut key to delete the specific cell. To disable this shortcut key, use the selection change event. We need an if statement. Use the intersect function to determine if the user selects a cell, that is, the variable target in the specific range, for example, B5. If it is nothing, then we should allow the user to use the shortcut key. Use the application of the onKey method. If we have no idea what the code for a specific key is, let's search it online. In the search engine, type onKey VBA. Click the link under Microsoft Learn. Scroll down and find the code for the keys needed. For example, the code for the control key is a caret. Back in the Visual Basic Editor, type the combined keys here, caret minus for delete. Else, when Excel detects the user selects a cell in the specific range, then the shortcut key should be disabled. Simply add a comma followed by a set of quotation marks. Start with if, end with if. Additionally, we may also want to hide the ribbon conditionally to avoid users using the delete command from the ribbon. With the application, use the execute Excel for macro method. All we need is to show the toolbar. Refer to the ribbon and use false to hide the ribbon. As we can see, string is string, thus enclose this function in a set of quotation marks. Take note that to end with a quotation mark, there must be a quotation mark to start with. Add quotation marks if necessary. Also, remember that when there is no intersection, we should show the ribbon by changing false to true. Bear in mind that there is a drawback to the on key method where Excel only disables the dash key but not the minus sign key on the number keypad. Therefore, we might want to consider checking the value returned by the formula. Use the calculate event. We need an if statement. Specify the data range, for this example, it is A1 to G15. All we need is to find reference errors. If Excel finds one, there will be something. Unfortunately, we don't have a code called something, but we have nothing. Take the negation and we will get something. When this condition is met, let's undo the deletion by applying the undo method. Leave a message if necessary. Remember that this macro will be executed repeatedly. Therefore, we must disable this event before performing undo by setting enable events equal to false. Once everything is done, set it back to true. End this if statement with an end if. With this method, we don't have to worry that the users use the delete command from the ribbon. Besides, if we want to disable the cut or copy paste feature in Excel, in the selection change event, make use of the application to disable the cut copy mode property. Let it be false. The coding part is now done. Let's go back to the spreadsheet to check the result. Select the specific cell, and the ribbon is hidden. Select other cells, and the ribbon is shown. Next, try to copy. Copy any cell, and when we move to the specific cell, the copy-paste mode is disabled. Let's try with deletion, and we should be able to notice that the specific cell cannot be deleted. If, let's say, we don't want to disable the right-click command, we may consider disabling the delete control from the command bar. Back to Visual Basic Editor and delete the event for before right-click. In the selection change event, when the intersect function returns nothing, the delete control should stay enabled. Create a for loop to run through each control, say CBC, in the command bars. All we need is to find a control with ID 292. When Excel finds it, let the control in the enabled mode. Finished one control, continue to the next. 
In contrast, if the intersect function returns something which indicates the specific cell is selected, then we should disable the control by changing true to false. Let's go back to the spreadsheet. If I select the specific cell and right-click, we can clearly see that the delete control is disabled. However, when I select any other cell and right-click, the delete control is enabled, as we can see here. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Wishing you a wonderful day, and this is Ah Singh.